Nathan, welcome back to Charlton Athletic. How does it feel to return as manager of the football club? Uh, look, I'm delighted and uh, um, it's a club I, you know, I always, always looked out for. It's a club I had probably one of my best years in football in terms of learning, in terms of the enjoyment I had and the people I got to know. Um, so I, and it was a club that probably shaped a lot of what I do as a manager. So um, really good to be back, really good to see some old faces and, uh, and it's really good to get started. You know, it's been a, a, a long process, so I'm really good to get started. For any supporters who aren't aware, back in 2012, I believe, you were our under-21s professional development coach. So Sparrows Lane and the Valley are familiar to you. How has it been retracing your steps here, reconnecting with former staff and also meeting the new faces as well? Uh, look, it's been, been brilliant. It's always, look, obviously when, we, when I, we've played, come up against Charlton and, and I've managed against Charlton and stuff. So you see a lot of people anyway. I've kept in touch with people over the years, some real good people here. We, we now class as friends and, um, and it, it's really good. Obviously, it's been a redevelopment here at, at Sparrows Lane. I always thought it was a really good training ground anyway. And now, obviously, it's been, it's been a real good investment in the, um, in, in the training ground and it's, it's a fantastic place. But the good thing is it's kept that sort of homely feel to it and, uh, and that Charlton feel, and that's the good thing. Supporters will want to know a little bit more about how your appointment came around. When the interest was expressed, were you pretty set in your mind that this was the next right step for you? Uh, it was. Look, I've, I had sort of tentative conversations back in, um, I think it was September, I, I, I think, but it, it just wasn't the right time, you know, in, in everything. I'd, um, I, I needed to take a spell out after, after, my, uh, after my, uh, and my time at Southampton. I, you know, I took, took time out to, to spend with, with family and, and things and to do stuff I hadn't, hadn't done for pretty much all my life, really. So I wanted to, to, to do that and then... Um, and then when I was ready to go back in, when I felt I, I, I was, which was probably about six to eight weeks ago, um, I, I then started to listen to, 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 to offers. I had a number of opportunities to go back in. Um, you know, as, as I said, championship clubs, I had a chance to go abroad, a chance to other, other, other League One clubs. But, um, you know, Charlton has a little bit of a place in my heart, if I'm honest. Um, and I know it's a fantastic club. I know, you know obviously, the predicament and the, and the situation it's in now but this is a place that, that can really go places and it's a, it's, a, it's a club that can really go places I believe um, obviously the, the owners I spoke to the owners it was an, it was an extensive process because I needed to know as well that that you know it, it, the owners are in it for long term they want to they want to do good things and they you know they want to take Charlton to, to 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 levels that it's been before and that's that's the project I wanted. Building on that, because being a football manager, it's so intense, it's so relentless, you don't really get much of a, a chance to pause. How useful have you found the break as an opportunity to reflect and to recharge? It has been, you know, it's, I, I live in a wonderful part of the country, so I was able to do a lot of stuff, you know, like, like uh, paddle boarding and, and sunbathing and walks and runs on the beach and stuff. So it was really, really good to that. But then I also... It's always like to be a proper dad for for a while because you know my my daughter's three and a half and for two and a half years of her life I I I won't say I've been absent but I'm being the dad I should have been in terms of being at home and the time I've spent with her so that's been absolutely priceless and no amount of money or no amount of anything could could can, can take that away now and that's that's been wonderful so I've you know I, I've I've enjoyed my time off um, but then it comes a point where you you know your purpose in life is 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 obviously to be a, a, a good person, but I, my, 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 you know, what, I'm, what I believe I'm good at is being a manager of a football club. So I was itching to get back in at the end. I took a good break, did a lot of things I, I hadn't done before, um, refreshed, you know, sort of reflected on everything and recharged. And then obviously now I'm, I'm ready to go. I noticed that you have the title of manager rather than head coach. Is that a deliberate change? Is that a deliberate choice from you? And if so, why? So it, it's, it's not just my doing that, you know. Charlton told me what they, you know, when I met the, the, everyone here, and I met Andy, and I met Jim, and I met the owners and stuff, they have a certain certain thing that they want to do, you know, how they want the club to evolve, what what changes they want to do, what they want driven, and, and that's the job of a manager, and that's what appealed it to me. Now, I don't mind being a head coach, but if if, you know, Certain things on recruitment need need driving. Certain things around environment need driving, and a lot of other things. Then that's the role of a manager. So that's why I'm I'm a manager, so that I've got slightly more responsibilities than a, a normal quintessential head coach would have. You join us during one of our, our toughest spells of form. What is your initial assessment of the task at hand? 
look, we're in a tough position and we've got to win games. You know, that's the be all and end all. But you know, it, that's every football club. You very rarely go into a football club where you can think, okay, I'll just evaluate for a few months and, and see what, what it's like. You know, you're either at one end of the table or the other, and uh, or striving for something. That's that's the glory of English football because it's, you know, with playoffs, you're always striving for something, and and then with the competitiveness of, of every league, you, you know you could get, could get dragged into anything. So the, the be-all and end-all and the, 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 the thing we have to do is win football games. So we understand that, but that's, that's the same, you know, whatever. Yeah, there's a, a little bit more pressure on it, but, you know, we, we're under no more pressure than we put on ourselves. You watched the game on Saturday, and I'm sure you've watched many of our, our League One games so far this season. What are your immediate areas of focus that you want to improve upon and what things have you seen from the squad that you really like the look of and want to see a little bit more of? Look, look, it's, it's a really good, honest squad. It's athletic. It, it has talent. Um, what they're not doing at the minute is keeping clean, she- clean sheets and outscoring the opposition, which is a simple thing. If you keep clean sheets and score more than the opposition, then you win games. And that's not what's happening at the minute. So. You know, they've been in every game. There's a real honesty about the group, and look, all we're trying to do is try to get over the line every week so that we can we can get points on the board and then then start to lay a foundation, which we we hopefully can see, you know, fruition in next year and 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 in the coming years. There's a lot of talent and quality in this team, and it was great to see some snippets of you taking training on Monday. How much are you just enjoying being back out on the grass with your players? Well. The ironic thing is, I, I I'm a coach at heart. I'm a, I'm a manager of coaches, and I've always I've, my my background has become f- through development and through coaching. You know, even before I came to Charlton, we you know I was assistant manager at Yeovil, and and we invested in young players. So I've always been a coach that likes to be on the grass and to take a heavy chunk of it. Um, but I also also enjoy managing the football club. But I've loved being back out, and uh, apart from the wind, it, it's it's been it's been you know fantastic. We have good facilities here, so I've enjoyed being back out. And and the important thing is to get the buy-in from the players, and the players have been magnificent. You know, they've bought in, they've asked me to do everything I've asked them to do, they've done, they work hard, and that's all you can ask as a manager. And I've had my success when I've got a group of players that that just buy into everything you do, that follow you, that 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 go with you, and 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 that's what I'm hoping happens here. Yeah, leadership is so important, isn't it? And the club has undertaken a lot of change on and off the pitch, not just in the last year, but even in between when you were working with us and, and today. That change has perhaps been underlined by the fact that we've had so many outfield players play for the club so far this season. How important is it to build stability and consistency to push up the table? Well, in any business, those two words are, you know, stability and consistency. You look at leadership and stuff are, are are quintessential to everything. You know, if if you haven't got those those words, then and you haven't got those characteristics in place, then you're not going to be as successful as you want to be. So of course it is, but there has to be. They'll, they'll, I, I would imagine in in the early part there'll be a, 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 whether it's additions or turnovers or whatever it is, or staff or players or, or whatever that is. But then once we become settled and we're happy in the place we're at, we're at, then we can start evolving and we'll evolve with the people that we have. You know, I, I believe in in people buying into into things and then you know if you have a clear message, a clear way of doing things, not just playing, but a clear way of acting or clear philosophy, if you like, of everything, how to act, how to speak, how to. To, to look forward, then, then we're able to set in place real foundations which will stand us in good stead for years, years to come. You know, I, again, I go back to my previous club at, 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 at Luton. We put in foundations there that meant that one man wasn't responsible for that. So when the manager left, it, it didn't fall apart. Um, and that's the type of club I want to build again here. What do you make of the current balance and competition within the squad? Yeah, I think they've got some real, real good talent in, in terms of here. We will add, and we will, you know, we'll, there'll be changes in the playing squad over, over the coming windows. We, we, we know that, but that's just an evolution process, and that's what we have to do. First and foremost, we've got to win games with the group of players we got. Then we'll evaluate those and who we can take forward and who, who, who we, we don't feel we can, and then we'll make the necessary changes. What, what I have been, been told, but by. by Sort of by the owners and the board that look, they want to build something here. They they're in it for the long haul, which is great to know because I, look, I've watched from afar with, with some of the things that have happened at the football club and and always you know at, at a tinge of real disappointment because I loved my time here. I know the people that were here, but from my dealings with with the ownership group here now, they they're in it for the long haul. They want to build something, which is what attracted it you know to me. I I, I don't believe I'm a fly by manager. If I leave a club, it's usually not. Because I, I want to leave or, or anything, so I'm, 
um, you know, I'm looking forward to the challenge and, and excited with the people that we can, we can take forward. Taking over at this point in the season, I just wondered what is your approach to pragmatically installing your own ideas and your desired style of play with the immediate priority, which is, is picking up points? Well, the paramount thing is picking up points and however we do that, you know, we, we, we'll, we'll demand a little bit from them. We, it, you know, in, in terms of how we go about our work and uh, and things, but you know, it won't be a revolutionary change overnight. We'll ask them to run a bit harder, to to defend better, and hopefully be a little bit more potent in in front of goal. And if if we can do that and pick up points, then we can start to rebuild. And, and as I said, we always use the word of of evolving because what we want to do is get better every window, get better every every month, every season, so that the club continually moves forward. Moving on from your squad to the coaching team around you, how are you planning to shape that? Well, evaluate what's here first, and then if any changes need to be made, we'll, we'll make changes. I, you know, I've, I've, I've gone into clubs on my own, you know, before, and I've also gone in with, with, with a set, set load of staffs. So I've, I've done both. But what I want to do at this, at this football club is evaluate what we have here see what, what changes, if any, need to be made and then, and then bring in the required personnel. The club has done a lot of work over the season in terms of the infrastructure around the first team. We have a technical director in Andy Scott and a director of performance services in Dr Will Abbott. How do you see yourself working with them? Well, it's, it's a collaboration, but it has to be from everyone. You know, It comes from, down from the owners through to Andy, through to myself, to, to any head of department. We have to work together because at the end of the day, not one person or one thing is going to turn this football club around it has to be you know a clear desire to do that and a clear philosophy and a clear plan really not philosophy but a plan of how to do that and then we all need to get on board and drive that and then you know i've said everyone has to do the bit it's it's, it's the inches it's the yards it's the, the the marginal gains has been very um sort of advertised quite a lot if we do those really really well and everyone is together and drives something, then we can achieve something special. And that's the only way it's going to happen. It's clear how ambitious and motivated you are by the project here. And it feels like it could be a really exciting chapter for the football club, but one that's going to require some patience, maybe even some growing pains as well. How important will it be for you to have the backing of the supporters on that journey? I think it's going to be essential, but we'll, you know, two things need to happen. One, they need to come with an open mind and be, re yeah, we're ready to, to back this. And then they have to see progress. They have to see a team that they can be proud of. And that's, that's all we can do is put a team out there that, you know, this is with, with real, real respect. It's a working class area, you know, in terms of where it is, a great area, a real passionate area. Um, but they want to see honesty. They want to see hard work. And then they want to see a bit of talent as well. That's... That's all you can ask for, and that's what we, you know, we intend to give them. Um, yet, we'll, we'll require patience, but I think you earn patience when, when they see progress. So there's going to be, hopefully, lots of ups. We'll have to take one on the chin now and again. We, we know that, but that's character, and that's how we recover from it. And you know, we're looking forward to the challenge. Everyone here has taken on a challenge. No one's come here because it's, you know, it... it, it it's all glitter and gold and immediately everyone's come here because they see the potential, they see the history of the football club, they see what can be achieved if everything comes together and everyone has their part to play in that. It's clear how much you love the football club. I just wondered how excited are you to take up that manager role in the technical area at the Valley, which is just such a fantastic stadium. It is, and I, I only, ironically, I've, only, I've, I've done it twice actually. I've done it once as a child and under 21 manager and I did it um, uh, when I was a Stoke manager here. Um, and um, it, it's a great, it's a great stadium. It's a proper, proper football stadium that we have. A, you know, saying in football, it's a proper football stadium. You know, there's, it's, it's big. It's, it, the atmosphere is fantastic when it's rocking. It's a little bit rustic at, at, at points, and it's bang in the middle of you know houses. It's everything that a, that a, that a British or English football football stadium can be. So I'm really excited to get it. What we want to do is again put a team out there that the fans can get behind. Obviously, in the in the initial. We, we want the fans to come and lift lift everyone. We then can give them something to get behind and then it can be a, a marriage and a union that we can all be proud of. Finally, Nathan, it, it has been a tough season, but despite that, we have seen decent crowds at the Valley and on the road, especially Charlton fans have travelled in their numbers, selling out their allocations up and down the country, which is really impressive. They've done the same again on Saturday. They're backing you and the boys for a huge game. What, what is your message to our supporter base? 
it's what I expect from, from Charlton fans, and that's not being disrespectful, but it, it's what you expect. They, they're real good fans. I knew that. I knew that when I came here you know, in 2012. I saw it firsthand. But it's, it's what's needed. You know, we all need to come together now. It's, never mind what's gone on in the past and so on. And there's been you know, a lot of tough times, Charlton fans. I know you've been through those times. I've seen it from afar. I've felt it as a, you know, as, as a, as a secondary fan, if you like, from, from the time I had here. But now it's time to put all that behind. Now it's time for that we, we look forward. And yet it's gonna, there's a process. We hope it's a quick process, but it might just be a process. Um, but we're asking everyone to get behind and, and, and we'll be judged ultimately on results. But I also want them to look deeper and them to see a team, yeah, this is they can be proud of. This is our Charlton team. And it is their Charlton team. It'll be their team. You know, we'll build it. We'll, we'll put it out there, but it is their team. And if, if they want to get behind it, brilliant, because we can enjoy the journey together. And that's the special thing, to buy in really early and to follow the journey right through. You know, it's easy to be a fan, and I'm not saying Charlton fans, it's easy to be a fan when you're going well, but you know when you're a true fan when things are tough and you've come through those, and then you can really be proud of yourselves as everyone else at the football club when we come through a tough spell. Well, Nathan, thank you so much for your time and welcome to the club. Thank you very much. Pleasure.